Hey guys, Ray again. This is not a part three of the table build. Uh, I had deleted some scenes that I feel were kind of important to telling the full story of the build. So I'm going to be including those scenes here in this video. But before we get to the deleted scenes, uh, I'd like to discuss an interesting question that, I, that keeps popping up. I've been getting messages directly about this table. Is what did the table cost? Well, the table cost quite a bit. Um, in materials alone, that is steel, aluminum, wood, stainless steel, fasteners, and powder coating. The direct cost of just the materials is $900. So $900 is not an insignificant amount. And we're talking about a picnic table. It's a very expensive table. But for me, having access to the shop, um, you know, I only had to pay for the direct cost between materials and uh, out, outside vendors like the powder coating. So, getting that out of the way, because uh, I have gotten quite a few questions about it, i like to get to the deleted scenes. There are three uh, items or scenes that were either deleted or compressed uh, so much that you, you couldn't tell what was going on. At least, not enough for me to feel like the full story of how to build this table was told. Now, the first scene is the welding. You saw how I welded the plugs into the one-inch pipe with the puddle welds and I described that. Uh, I also ended up describing but not showing you how the uh, plugs for the half inch pipe got welded on. Uh, let me show you a little snippet of that video here. So you can see that's how the welding of the half inch diameter pipe to the extended adapters went. Um, and because they went on the ends instead of inside the pipe, the length of the, of the half inch uh, Schedule 40 pipe had to be compensated for the addition of those ends on the, on the, uh, the adapter ends on the pipes. So it was a little bit different in construction than the spreaders for the table itself where the plug went inside the pipe. The second uh, scene that I did show but I showed it in a compressed form and I feel like because I, I didn't include the explanation that maybe some of the intricacies and subtleties of that and significance uh, was missed and that was the repair of the bench spreaders, those half inch pipe where I had to uh, drill it tap it and put in these small adapters well uh, and I'll play that in a minute but those adapters are actually uh, uh, bought they are like helicoils but they're solid they're solid threaded inserts and let me show you that uh, let me show you that video scene here so you can get the full grasp of how much work it was to actually repair those pipes in order to get the finished result we wanted with the 3 8 bolts what we have here is a little failure. You can see that this is tapped half inch 13. The problem is the hole in the plates is for 3 8. That is not going to work. So the solution is this. It's kind of like a helicoil, but it is a solid piece. No, uh, it's not like a spring. So I've got to open up this hole, tap it, thread it for this, and it will accept my 3 8 13. Uh, I'm sorry, 3816. So it is a expedient field repair that we're doing right here in the backyard in order to get this assembled and put together here. So first thing I'm going to do is drill this hole just a little bit bigger. That way we're not drilling so much material. That was the first drill. Second drill is the tap drill size for that for that threaded insert. This is the tap drill size for that. It's a little bit of cutting oil for the 
the tap. Could tap this by hand, but the drill does a very good job. go that is a perfectly tapped hole now to install these is a little bit difficult when you're dealing with regular helicals uh, you've got to have a special helical installation tool or make your own this is the make your own kind of situation here so I just got a bolt with a couple of nuts to add a, act as spacers I'm just gonna install this side. Ready? And there we have it. Our field expedient repair corrected the problem from being this size thread to this size thread. So we just got to do this all about 11 more times. And the third and final scene that was um, uh, omitted, and the reason I removed these scenes is because the videos just were getting too long. One was 13 minutes, the other one was 15 minutes. Um, and honestly, they're just too long, but this particular project was a little bit more complicated than some of the more simpler projects. Um, is The third uh, piece of the puzzle is this right here. The way that these aluminum tubes get attached. And I did show it towards the end of uh, part two. You've just got a little glimpse inside the tube here. But there is a rivet nut. It's a, it's a threaded insert that is riveted in place. And I'm going to show you that video here. And the reason it's interesting is because of the tool that I used. It is a hydraulic hand riveter. It's a little hydraulic piston that is a rivet gun. And it's actually a military uh, designed and issued tool got a military ID number on it so it's uh, it's very interesting and very very expensive uh, we've got three of them in the shop so I borrowed one to do this I'm going to show you now all right the last thing I've got to do is mount the aluminum square tubing so what I'm gonna be using is this this is a rivet nut this is a quarter 20 rivet nut and i'll show you what this is it's a lot like a rivet it gets riveted in place with a special tool it's a hydraulic tool i'll show you what that is in a minute uh, i'm going to drill a hole put it in there rivet it in place and then i can just put in a regular screw it's got threads inside quarter 20 threads so let's get started Now I've got to drill it 3 eighths of an inch and the only thing I had that was 3 eighths was this long monstrosity so I'm going to use that. And because this rivet nut is actually 15 thousandths bigger all I'm going to do is rotate this just a little bit. Just open up the hole just slightly. Now I'm going to hammer this in place. There's the rivet nut. There you go. Now this here is the hydraulic rivet tool. Yes, this is actually a tiny little hydraulic cylinder. It applies thousands of pounds of pressure and believe me, for these things you need several thousand pounds. And it's, you can do regular uh, rivets and cherry uh, rivets, but for these, they work wonders. So there it is. That is the hydraulic rivet riveter in place with the rivet nut. And all I'm going to do is squeeze this handle. And you'll see the important thing is you got to keep this square. That's all I'm doing is squeezing this handle. And you'll feel it right about there. Next, there's a little button at the bottom. I'm going to press that and that releases the, the hydraulic piston and now it will unscrew and just like that we have an installed rivet nut I'm going to show you this a little closer up so I have exactly one of these rivet nuts left and I figured I'll show you what it looks like when it's not in the piece of metal since I've only got one left and you can see it so 
There is the hydraulic uh, riveter. There is my rivet nut. And we're going to go ahead and activate it here. And you'll see right here how it crushes that zone. Now typically, this is in a piece of metal. So the metal is usually between the head and where you see it crushing. And there it is. That's it. Now we're going to back it off. I'm going to press the button. Back it off. And we'll take it we'll take it off of this. It's no good now because I have used it, but there you see it. It crushes um, the rivet nut where you see these ridges and the metal is usually between these two points between the head and this crush zone and that's how it works and the inside of course has threads and that's it that is the three missing scenes that help complete the story of the building of this table um, for some of you maybe it's not that interesting but I think that based on some of the questions that end up popping up that uh, maybe some of you would find that bit of information more interesting I am thinking about making a video of just the hydraulic uh, riveter. If you want to see a video uh, covering just that hydraulic riveter, please let me know in the comments. I do read all the comments and I will respond. And if, uh, if I get an, uh, enough of a response, I will make a video of just the hydraulic riveter because it is kind of a very interesting tool if you've never seen one before. Uh, so thank you all for watching. Please don't forget to comment. I do read them all and I do respond to most, if not all of them. Um, like the video and subscribe while you're here and don't forget to hit the little bell indicator that'll let you know when I upload another video. Thanks again.